Hi, Val, and uh, welcome today. Thank you. Good to and, you. Yes, and uh, hello to all the viewers out there. Uh, I'm uh, here with uh, Val today, and we have decided to have a conversation about the current situation, the crisis we are facing right now. And we have a question we would like to address, and that's uh, about how can psychosensuses or a spiritual practice help us in this crisis? And uh, if you uh, should uh, say a couple of words about you, about where, do, where you're coming from. <laughs> Thank you, Kat. <laughs> um, so first of all, I'm really glad that we can have this conversation and that all of you are tuning in because it's so important to be in the conversation right now. There's so much happening in our world, inner and outer. Um, so just a little bit about who I am. I'm Val Salitker. I'm the co-founder and director of Psycho Spiritual Institute. And we, we work in psychosynthesis. Um, a little bit of my background, I come from eco psychology, deep ecology and ecotherapy, and now bring the spiritual psychology of psychosynthesis into my work mm -hmm. and so I work both with individuals and I also run coach training programs and a lot of other wonderful workshops and speaking opportunities for us to like dive in deeper to what's going on so in a nutshell that's mm. a little bit about me yeah yes yeah and we know each other uh, through psychosynthesis I've been aware about your institute in uh, in Florida and I also had the privilege to uh, teach there uh, one time uh, and it was really good. And if I should say a couple of words about myself, I can say that I'm a trained psychotherapist uh, and um, have been the former director of training at the Norwegian Institute of Psychosynthesis. And I've done a lot of workshop uh, within meditation, uh, developed different psychological uh, programs. Uh, and uh, yeah, I've been involved in this type of work for the last uh, 20 years uh, or so. So I'm, I'm very um, keen about investigating this uh, crisis and also offer some perspectives about how should we perceive what's going on right now? How can we uh, help our community uh, coming through this uh, crisis, which uh, affects us all economically, uh, psychologically, and spiritual uh, also, perhaps. So uh, if we uh, should give the viewers um, a little uh, overview about what we are going to speak about, we, can, we will uh, say something about how, this, how we deal with this on a personal level. How do we uh, go through this crisis with our type of background. I think some of the viewers could be interested to hear some of the tools that we're working with, some of the perspectives. But we will also like to, um, to give some uh, perspectives about the moment we are in. What type of uh, perspectives do we hold and which are, very, which are most valuable? in order to keep the mind in the light and and not disappear into fear and worry and anxiety because mm -hmm. there's a lot of that going on out there. Yeah. So if if I should ask you, uh, Val, how do you uh, manage this uh, crisis? Yeah, these are, this is such an important question because we are all holding so much right now. Yeah. Um, so first, you know, I want to invite everybody who's, who's listening to just if you if you are in a space where you can just really tune in and we welcome you to be present with us for this conversation mm -hmm. because it's really important and we're as curious as you to see what what wants to unfold here but we know that this is where we need to be right now is in this inquiry and so part of how i am holding this this global crisis slash invitation mm. okay because i i see it as both yeah um, yeah, is to is to be in, you know, in psychosynthesis, we always we always talk about the loving observer. Mm. So that we're both experiencing what it is that we're experiencing and we're the one noticing what it is that we're experiencing from a space of of love and acceptance with what is and curiosity mm. to really explore mm. what's here for us to understand. And so how I'm moving through each moment and each day, if I, what I feel, when I feel things arising in me, 
you know, on, the, on this very personal and human level for my friends or friends of friends who have already died or are suffering from this virus and, and many more things that are happening mm. in our world is to bring myself into that deep presence and just breathe and sit in presence as the loving observer mm. to hold both the pain of our world, which is very real right now, Right? And we're not, we're not here to like push that away in any way. We're here to actually welcome it and all that's here for it. So I, I do that exactly. It's like, what is here? So going into the inquiry and the curiosity into what it is that I'm experiencing right now, personally, and being with that and looking at what it has to teach me in that moment. And also opening up to what wants to emerge from this experience right? Not in spite of it, but because of it, what's coming through for me right now. So there's both the honoring the pain of our world and being in the inquiry and curiosity for what wants to come through this experience. Mm. And I'm also holding not just my personal experience in this, Ken, but the, our collective experience, you know, so how I, in the questioning of like, how are we then as a global community holding our collective trauma, like this, this, something we've never experienced in our lifetime where an entire world is experiencing something similar simultaneously. We're all mm. tuned together to this. You know, what is that like to hold that and also to recognize what's possible? Mm. The same, what wants mm. to emerge. Mm. So that's, that's how I'm, I'm doing this right now is that allowing myself to feel really deeply, be present with what is honoring what is and, and opening, being receptive to what mm. wants to come through. Mm. What about you? Yeah, I, I think you really um, hit the nail there. I think you uh, managed to um, yeah to 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 formulate what what the practice is all about. It's 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 about being very present and aware to whatever arises, you know. And when I noticed myself each day, I can see that when I'm too much on the news, I can feel my energy level is uh, is uh, becoming lower. You know, I feel tired. So I really restrict my sources of information because I, I, I notice how it affects me. You know, there is some kind of a mass emotion out now uh, stirring up a lot of fear, anxiety, uh, nervousness, anger, uh, and and I'm very aware of how it uh, affects me, and uh, and I'm trying to to be centered exactly by the way uh, that you are presented by being a loving observer to it, uh, having my morning ritual with the meditation and aligning myself to source, um, all these type of of uh, of practices, and then also using the same te technique. Um, of the bifocal vision, uh, as we do, do in psychosynthesis, trying to understand the problems that we are facing uh, as a collective, uh, as a community, and uh, not being, uh, you know, uh, vague about it or trying to wish things away. It is a very serious situation we are in, and it really, it really um, demands a lot of um, compassion and also. Uh, clear thinking and on the other hand I really agree with you it's so important also to listen to the soul uh, in this uh, and to the emerging purpose of what's unfolding here I don't believe this crisis is coincident you know I, I believe there's something here that we can learn about and um, what I can see is that while uh, humanity is now struggling to to breathe when we are affected by the virus. Then the planet, uh, nature, is starting to breathe. You know all the pollution and all the effect we 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 have on a daily basis or on nature is now gradually uh, disappearing. So we give the planets now some weeks, possibly some months without a very, um, without the usual impact of, uh, of um, yeah, all the pollution that we affect. So these type of uh, thoughts and uh, the, the practice of meditation, and of course, uh, 
it's also important to stay in connection with people around, uh, family, friends, uh, the community, and uh, building a coalition of like-minded who in some way is a, a coalition of people who, who practice holding the mind in the light and not uh, yeah, become too immersed in, in all this uh, fear and mass emotion. Mm, yeah, yeah, you made some really important points. You know, I'm gonna speak to one of them that just came up for me too. Well, actually two. So one is that, you know, it, this experience of um, the entire global ecosystem taking a big, deep breath. Yes. Really, and it's so interesting, you know, coming from an ecological perspective, right, where everything is interconnected. It's like we, as part of this larger body of the earth, right, allowing our sense of self to expand to an ecological self, right, mm. holding us there, we are inviting ourselves to take a deep breath. Mm. You know, it's like we're moving so fast and out, in a lot of ways, out of control, very disconnected from our sense of self. Mm. And so we're inviting now this pause exactly pause yeah. to really tune in to who we are mm. what what's really going on here mm. there's a lot of questions here and so on that 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 level where we're you know we're we're listening to the news and we're feeling these emotions rising up and i'm feeling it too you know like mm. i have a friend of mine who's, who just sent a message out you know from new york who's like in so much fear right now, like feeling trapped inside of his place and he's sick and he knows people who are sick and there's, these numbers are going up and you know, what it's doing is it's really reconnecting us to each other and allowing our hearts to break open to a deeper sense of compassion, mm. right? The ability to feel with one another mm. and also to feel with ourselves. You know, I think that we in general, we live in a world that, is, that teaches us to run away from feelings that are uncomfortable Exactly. Or from things that don't feel good, right? So we're constantly looking at ways to escape. We're like a nation of escape artists. Mm. So now we are forced to look at ourselves. We have to take a look at what, what is this? What's going on here? Mm. You know, and the whole world has to look. We mm. all have to in right now. So it is bringing us into a deeper sense of connection and compassion and curiosity. And like all of that is, is here for us right now. Mm. Hmm. I really like what you said about you know the ecological system and um, and uh, tuning into that uh, nerve in nature. I I spend uh, a couple of hours in nature every day. I'm so lucky to not be trapped in an apartment inside the city, but live uh, out close to nature. And I think it's so important for also the physical health uh, to um, to strengthen the uh, immune system. Uh, of course, eating healthy, but also spending time in outside or getting some air, some sun, uh, if it's available. Because I think what you point to is that we have been so uh, we are so used to be in in uh, activity with you know a lot of stress, uh, a very strict and scheduled day, and now it all stops. There's this big pause, and it creates a va a vacuum. And now it's up to us, what are we going to fill into this vacuum? Because it is actually a vacuum. And uh, we can allow all the subconscious forces uh, from the lower unconscious to well up and uh, overwhelm us. And we know that if we allow this, then it will also affect our immune system. Our immune system is very influenced by our psychological state. Uh, and we know that stress will release uh, stress hormones and lower our vitality. So we are not that good at fighting out, uh, uh, fighting off the, the virus. So that's why I, I believe that it's so important that we also strengthen, st are strengthening the mental health atmosphere by positive thinking, by having a larger view of what's going on. Um, because it will affect our our body and its ability to fight off uh, this uh, virus. So, and doing that will 
will make us able to uh, connect with the superconscious and bring in all the new ideas and the new inspiration that that we need exactly in in this uh, in this hour. Yeah, that, and so so important what you're saying. You know, it, it's it's you know thinking about that and thinking about the, the personal and the transpersonal. You know, and I feel like you know that we talk about this crisis, and we could say it's like this ecological crisis. Mm. As we look deeper into what that really means, we see that it's actually a crisis of perception, mm. right? A crisis of understanding who we are and how we relate to the world around us. Right. Mm. And that's, that's this deeper invitation, just as psychosynthesis is an invitation for us to look at who we truly are. Mm. Right. And we're invited to look at who we are as humanity right mm. now, who we as humans. What does it mean to be human? And so, you know, we, we talk about in psychosynthesis that we have the personal self, we have the transpersonal or, or the higher self, or sometimes mm. the soul. Right. And that is like this resonance of who we are. And so we, we move along in our lives and sometimes we get this nudge or this feeling and it's like something we must do, something we have to do. There's a call, the call of self, right? Mm, that we mm, mm, and it exactly. wants to be known, it wants to come through us. And so how do we know, how do we get to know ourselves in a world where we're so layered with conditions and mm. stories and from the moment, you know, we're born into this world unstoried, but very quickly, you know, all these layers of, of how we're supposed to be and who we're supposed to be and how the world works and you know our educational system, our social system, it's all piled on top of us until we're mm. like peeling away layers, try to find who we are. Mm. So we discover who we are, you know, sometimes in, in those peak moments, right? At the mountaintop, right? Mm. Well, we had those moments where we're just like, oh yeah, like I feel interconnected with everything. You know, sometimes it's in those simple everyday moments, the way the the way the sunlight hits the leaf, you know, mm. and just shines and glistens, and all of a sudden you feel this deeper sense of connection to mm. you. Mm. And sometimes, and I think maybe most often, mm. we find it in the dark night of the soul. Mm. We find it in those most challenging moments of our lives. And I feel like, you know, it, it, those moments show us who we are and mm. remind us that we are capable of, of creating anything. Sometimes those are the moments that actually reveal to us our path. Mm. So when I when I look at this on a global level right now, it's like humanity is experiencing a dark night of the soul. Mm. We're invited right now to turn toward that experience and sit with what what is this? You know, fear is feedback, mm. right? These emotions are a way for us to tell ourselves to pay attention, right? What's coming up? There's something here that's saying mm. that wants and if we are allow ourselves to be with this and this is sort of this perception shift right mm. okay, there's fear here like i'm afraid you know i i'm i'm i feel like the pain of our world i'm, I'm suffering with other people like i see this happening right now what does this have to tell me and teach me about mm. who i am mm. and how i want to show up in the world right now mm. and who are we? What does it mean to be human at this time? And how can we show up as a collective to, to make new choices, to engage mm. our will, to be who we truly are as we peel away these layers of things that are not working, the ways that we're showing up that are based on fear and panic and suffering and not truly centered in our in ourself, right? So we, I think that there's so much information here in this moment when we allow ourselves to be with that as well as a way to kind of move through the fear and see it as, as also a mm. gift. Mm. And uh, saying this, uh, I really also see that in some way we are experiencing a, a, a mass experiment in disidentification because uh, we all now is in a total different situation and uh, we need to um, step back. We need to disidentify from, from our normal habits, uh, what we normally do on a daily level, because we have created this uh, new situation. And it, uh, the more we are able to, and this disidentification is a very prominent uh, concept within psychosynthesis. It's, you know, um, taking the perception as the observer, stepping back, 
realizing that I'm not my thoughts, I'm not my emotions, I'm not my sensation, but I'm this inner witness, this loving observer that that perceive and experience all these uh, types of impact. So we are in, in, in some way now uh, forced to rethink our life uh, uh, and, you know, stepping back from what we used to do. And now we have a moment where we can start contemplating, okay, what is it for a life that I'm actually in a deeper sense wants to live? What is my deeper values? Uh, is, it, uh, is it necessary for me to, uh, to um, be attached to all the things in my life? Or could, can I let go of something in, so I can use more energy on whatever, my children, uh, my coworkers, or whatever? So it is a big, big experiment in disidentification from from all the strings that we have uh, of attachment to to work to to uh, to to life that has to be normal in a, in a sense and of course we we face the fear of the unknown then and uh, this we we just need to yeah to to hold and be will and uh, listen to this deeper voice uh, within yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, the fear, it's so interesting because there's so much fear that's arising right now. And a lot of it is centered around the feel, the, the feeling of uncertainty, the feeling that, you know, we don't know what's going to happen next. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's, so, it's interesting because it, I don't feel like it's not, the uncertainty is not really the problem. It's the way we think about our relationship to the uncertainty. So I to make that distinction for all of us. So if, if, if you're sitting here, you know, you're listening right now and you're saying, well, I, you know, I have a lot of fear. I don't know what's going to happen next. And that makes me feel afraid and all of this. The invitation here is to actually look at um, the thinking about the uncertainty, because first of all, life is filled with uncertainty, mm -hmm. right? And we don't know what's going to happen next, but the problem's mm -hmm. not the uncertainty. The problem is believing that we can't handle it mm -hmm. or we don't have the capacity to hold it. Right. So there could be this part of us that says, I don't know what I'm going to do next. I don't know how I'm going to handle this. I don't think I'm capable of handling this. Like all of that, 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 that those inner thoughts that come from, you know, our sub personalities or our wounded parts that just don't think that we have the capacity. Mm -hmm. And so I want to, I feel like really called to say this, which is that we all have within us the capacity to hold and in everything that we're given, you know, we are whole, we are resourceful, we are capable, you know, and this is what we know. We know this inside of ourselves. Mm. The deep part of us knows that we are capable. We are creative. You know, who we are is the intelligence of the universe. The call mm. it whatever mm. you want, you know, that is ultimately who we are. Mm. And when to disidentify, Ken, as you were speaking so beautifully to, and come back into our sense of home, our sense of center. Mm. We have access to our creativity, our resourcefulness, no matter what life presents us or mm. we present ourselves as life, mm. you know, we are invited to step into ourselves more deeply. What am I capable of? Mm. So change that question to, I don't, what's going to happen next to, What's going to happen next? Mm. You know, what what can I create from this space? What is life asking of me right now? What wants to emerge for me in my life right now? Where's my pivot? And my pivot could very well be like, what are the needs of the world? And what are the gifts that I have mm. to meet the needs of the world through me? Mm. So, so just coming back into like, what is it that we're thinking about the situation and inviting us into a deeper sense of resourcefulness, wholeness, and creativity? Mm moment and seeing what what's there if we come back to that centered space mm. and allow what wants to come through to come through mm. because we only have clarity when we move ourselves out of suffering and into a deeper sense of self right mm. that that space that powerful state that moves that allows us to open up to clarity and creativity mm. Mm. but you you were also speaking about the dark night of the soul uh, and I like I like that concept. Um, and while you were speaking, it was also like I was came into connection with death. 
you know, because there's some death around uh, the situation right now. People is dying uh, from this virus. So some people will, will experience loss, um, but it's also, it can also be loss of e economic opportunities. And this is also a kind of death, you know, death of the way the life was used to be. Uh, so there's some um, dramatic event unfolding right now where the old self, the old world is about uh, to break down. Uh, I don't know how much it will break down, but we can certainly see that something is breaking down uh, right now and nobody really understands what the consequences economically, socially, will be afterwards. Uh, and so we have this death energy um, coming through this crisis. And the death energy is about, you know, letting go of old identifications, letting go of the old life and, um, and experiencing that we can actually manage death if we are aware about what is going on. Uh, and so I think it's, it's so important to, to, to really realize the kind of pain some people will go through uh, if they lose uh, some of their loved ones or if they lose a lot of economic, um, some will lose companies, some will lose their job, uh, their livelihood. So there's a lot of um, at stake here, and particularly what I would call the economic self. Uh, the economic self inside of us is the part of us who are very identified with material things, with money, and with all the modern materialistic uh, worldview. Um, and I think there's something to learn with, with this type of death experience here. Um, I don't know yet what it is, but perhaps there will come a new type of economy out of it. Perhaps there will come out uh, a new type of values, a new, perhaps a, sim a more simple living. Mm. What do you think? I think that evolution happens under the greatest amount of pressure. Mm, exactly. And we're in it like we and, you know, um, one of my beautiful mentors, her name is Joanna Macy, and she's a deep ecologist, Buddhist scholar, system scholar, beautiful elder. And uh, she and others in this in this work, um, the ecotherapy work, you know, we're calling this time the great unraveling, mm. making way for the great turning. Right. So the great unraveling. Shh, and the great turning mm. movement, right? Of turning toward ourselves, turning toward our self, <laughs> turning mm. toward each other. Um, and in order for that to happen, these old systems must crumble away. And so as we move through this unraveling, um, there's inevitable death. Mm. And the universe needs death, right? Mm. Death and birth, right? This cataclysm, like all this, there's a, always a movement of emergence and death. And it is, when we look at it from a larger systems perspective, hmm. it's inevitable, like it needs to happen. And that doesn't mean take it easy in a sense, like it's, it hmm. doesn't, it's not going to be uh, hard to sit with hmm. because, you know, there's something called positive disintegration. And it's this, it's this time where the systems that we know and that we rely on and our identifications with these current normal systems mm. to crumble apart. And when that happens, we're, we're kind of left sitting in chaos, confusion, uncertainty. We have no idea what the next step is. You know, it's like being in a very thick fog that you can only see, you know, a, a, like a foot in front of you, mm. but every time you take a step, you can see a little more and you can see a little more and you know that as you keep stepping, you're going to see more. It's, you're always going to see what's next. Mm. You know, 
there's a, a bit of faith and a bit of trust that comes into this play. And there's also knowing that what emerges from this, it's called positive disintegration, because mm. as things disintegrate and fall apart, what emerges mm. is, let's say, a more aligned version of ourselves, um, a more whole experience of ourselves as a collective as well. Mm you know, like sort of the next level, the ideal, it's like stepping into the mm. ideal model, exactly. right? We want to create for society and mm. for our lives, right? So we have to give death as hard as it is to peel. It's, I think, I'm thinking right now, it's like a snake, you know, and like needing to shed its skin and like the painful process perhaps of like peeling mm. off skin that is not comfortable, but we have to do it in order to expand the next level of our being. Mm. And so that's, that's what I think about what's happening right now. And, that, and so we have to also be present to the pain that's here. That's mm. very important. I'm not saying, you know, well, it's just a gift. Let's no, no. It's like, this is real. We feel this. Let's feel it. Mm. Let's feel it with some perspective. Let's feel it with some groundedness and clarity, you know, and awareness of a larger picture at the same time mm. that as we're experiencing and we're holding. I really like what you're saying. Um, and, uh... A relevant question could be uh, to ask the question: How can how can I participate in um, in this in this transformation that we are witnessing? Because we are so we are witnessing this um, yeah, this death of an old thought form, and um, I think it's very. A concept that uh, Sajoli uses is also that we go from mass consciousness to individual consciousness to group consciousness to universal consciousness. And group consciousness is about um, the soul, the, the natural way the soul sees the world. And group consciousness, there's only one group, and that's humanity and all the species on the planet. So I think we are about to learn something about group consciousness and that we we it's not a it's not a possibility to come through this alone it's not a just an individual pro, uh, project no it's a collective it's a group it's a group progress it's a group evolution so i think in order for in order for having the right perception, getting the right type of inspiration. It's very important for people to come together, to listen together, to meditate together, uh, to hold space together in order for new realizations and, and new insights uh, to come through about what's the evolutionary purpose behind this uh, uh, this crisis we are facing right now. So it's in some way it's awakening. It's an awakening to a group consciousness. Um, and of course we there's a paradox. Of course we will always have an individual purpose. There will always be something unique we have to give to the collective. But we will always have to listen and understand what it is in a group perspective, because. We are not um, separated atoms. We are part of this network of, of light. Um, so what do you think about that? Yeah, yeah. I love how you throw it up. What do you think about that? <laughs> no, I, I think that that's beautifully said. Um, and it's, it's bringing to my awareness a quote that I love from Tom Yeomans. Mm. Uh, and I'm going to paraphrase it because I don't have it, you know, accessible at the moment, but um, something to the effect of the, you know, the more we understand our oneness with life, the collective, mm. right, that consciousness, the, the more we become ourselves, the more we understand our unique way of showing up, mm. you know, it's so much so that we we are so interconnected and interdependent with life and the outer world informs the inner world and the inner world informs the outer world, you know, and so we know that even as we, the, the, the more we understand our wholeness, I think the more confidence and courage we have within us to become ourselves more fully. And every single one of us is so unique. We all have something powerful and unique to offer this world. You know, no two creatures are alike. No two mm. people have a fingerprint, right? The, the stripes on every zebra, 
is, is pattern is completely different. Like every mm. species is unique by design. Whatever this divine mystery is that that we are, you know, is every single one of us is a unique expression of it, mm. of that. And so it's so important that as we tune into the group consciousness and we we gather ourselves together and we allow the magic of, of uh, synergy, you know, which is two or more things coming together, creating something larger than their, than their individual parts, mm. right? It's happening right now, mm. but as it creates something larger, it also informs each piece of that collective. Exactly. Right? Stronger. And so that's how we continue to evolve. That's mm. evolution. That mm. is evolution, baby. Like that's it mm. all right here. Like that's mm. what's going on. Mm. And I think that we are on the cusp of something really powerful right now mm. and it is up to each one of us every single one of you listening right now you know it's up to you to take the time to tune into what wants to come through mm. and ask yourself, how can i show up more fully as myself right now you know how can i contribute more fully to the whole you know and how is the whole informing my deeper sense of self mm. and that's yeah. the question i'll sit with right now and and in order for to enter this new stream, this new type of consciousness, there is some kind of a death with that we must go through. That's part of the journey. Yes. Uh, and so there is this breaking down within a cycle where we are able to build things, a new identity up. But we, we, it's, it's in some way, it's, it's a mesh. It's a, there can be some chaotic uh, elements in that process where from from being divided within to becoming whole, if that's the process. Um, psychosynthesis means we sometimes we speak about psychosynthesis with a large, with a capital P. That's the that's the psychology. That's uh, what we do. And then there's psycho, psychosynthesis with a uh, smaller P, and that's the evolutionary process. So so what we are working with is is a process through wholeness. And, and we are on a journey toward more and more wholeness. And uh, in order for that to happen, we need to collect all these fragments of ourselves, all these voices that we haven't listened to. And this is exactly how modern life uh, functions. As, as you said, we have been trained to run away from our our. Uh, better angels in some way because we're afraid of what's the consequences if I'm starting to listen to this deeper uh, deeper inner voice the consequence is death and uh, but not doing anything is meaningless and and uh, and uh, yeah despair at some point because we cannot go on upholding an old outworn form an old identity that's not authentic. Um, the, there's something in it that just natural break it down. And that's the evolutionary force that all of us is uh, riding on, or actually we are this evolutionary force. That's so important what you just said. It's so important what you just said. Look. <laughs> This is like, this is it right here. Like, this is the heart of it all. We have a dysfunctional society. Mm. Okay. It is not normal. There's nothing normal about, you know, mass extinction, starvation, pollution, mm. poison, cancer. This is not okay. The mm. way we are proceeding, business as usual cannot continue, right? This experience, as hard as it might be for some of us that are holding this, is also an incredible opportunity, an incredible invitation for us to not go back mm. to business as usual that is killing us, killing our, our, you know, our planet. We're killing the opportunity for our children and their children. Like we are destroying ourselves as a whole. Mm. That is on here and so when we say god i just want you know my business to continue as it was and everything to go back to normal let's be careful with that because mm. it's really uncomfortable to take a bold new step right now mm. might be really uncomfortable to uproot the way you've been doing things and you may not know what that next step looks like mm. but the invitation for us right now is to center into what it could possibly look like mm. that would allow us to be more human 
to be more ourselves, to be more honest and authentic and real about who we are and how we're showing up in this world. What is your life for? You are not here to just make money and die. I'm mm. sorry. Mm. We are so sucked into this consumer society. Exactly. We have to lead into what's really real right now. Mm. And this pause is an opportunity for us to do that. Mm. We can use it and make some changes that you know could completely shift the way we're showing up in the world and be like radical, mm. you know. Or we could just really, really fight to go back to these draconian ways that we see like these so-called leaders trying to uphold. It's crazy. Mm. Like mm. in the midst of this, they're still thinking economy first, economy, like money over everything. Like it's still this old paradigm. How can we, how can we create our world? Mm. How, what do we want to in, imagine? That's not this po post-apocalyptic doom and gloom scenario that we see in books and in movies and in everything that's like shoved into our psyche right now. Mm. We have an opportunity to reimagine a new way of being in a new world right now. This is it. Mm. What do we want to see for ourselves? What do we want to see for our lives, for our, 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 you know, our world, for our children and our grandchildren? You know, we get to choose that, guys. Mm. We really get to choose mm. that. We're not a slave unless we mm. forget all of this and just go right back to the trance, mm. right? Broken, we're, the whole world is shaken out of this trance right now, right? So what are we going to do with it? Let's not go back into it. Let's like make some new choices. So here it is right here. See it? Mm, mm. I yeah. feel very passionate about this moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can feel it. But yeah. Um, but you That's know, it. in some way, I, I, it's, it, it started to become very quiet in me. You know, it was like some kind of a silent. When you spoke, it was like, you know, clearing the table so we can pause and not panic and envision a new life. Um, and I'm, I'm absolutely aware that it's, it's a, a big deal to change the life and the habits, but there's no way around it. Uh, it's like... Uh, this crisis in some way is, uh, yeah, we have for now a couple of years now, there has been a big movement um, regarding the, the climate crisis. You know, more and more people demand solutions and the system is very, very, very slow to respond to this call. But I, as I see it, this big, big movement, worldwide movement uh, of, of a demand of uh, cleaner energy uh, in some way could invoke a situation like this, uh, some kind of a synchronicity that, you know, there's such a deep felt wish in, in humanity about clean water, a clean planet, uh, welfare for the for the animals and all the other kingdoms. So in some way, I think our wishes uh, and the demand, the collective call and the, uh, the collective demand has, I'm not saying that this call has caused the, 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 the virus, but I'm saying there's some kind of synchronicity. I think it's so amazing that the planet can breathe right now uh, because we have been stopped in our activity. And, and it's really worthwhile thinking about, do we need all this activity? And why do we need all this activity? It's like activity, activity, activity. We are, we are surrounding ourselves with so much noise so we cannot hear the signal from the soul. Uh, that's the problem. Yes, yes. Uh, yes to everything you just said, Ken. That was really articulated so beautifully. You know, and I keep thinking call of self, call of self. And mm. like, you know, a lot of times we, I think so many, you know, we focus on our, our self, you know, our personal mm. self our call of self and how am I showing up? And it's still a me, me, me. And we're so much invited into the we, we, we. Mm. And so what is the call of the um, 
funny enough, the call of the ecological self, the call of the larger collective self right now, you know, and um, humanity as a whole, imagine us as like one organism, you know, living out our subpersonalities, mm. and, all, and then all of a sudden, like, we're, we're facing this dark night, and we're invited, and, and, and the call of self wants to come through, it's trying mm. hard to emerge, and to uh, could Could you say something about what is your call about? I think there's some of the viewers out there would like to hear you express how you live your call. Mm, thank you. Yeah, I'm really clear on, on my call. Mm. Um, and it's very much about helping us remember who we are. Mm. And, I, and when I say that, I mean, not just on a personal level, like on an individual level, but also in an evolutionary sense you know, as this, as this intelligence of the universe, as this great mystery, like remembering who we are in the deepest and largest context as well, so that we can fully align the way we live our lives with who we know we are. And mm. I believe if we all do this individually, we create a transformation in our world. Mm. So one way I'm in the, you know, I'm, I'm here to help us remember very profoundly on that on those levels and another thing i've been kind of joking around about lately is i'm like mm. the business of building resilience you know because what very much what it is and it kind of comes back to what we were speaking of earlier uh, of knowing that whatever it is mm. that we're facing we can move through this we can hold this. we can do this together we're meant to we're we're here it wouldn't be happening if it wasn't in some way supposed to be because it's, it's moving us and guiding us and showing us what we're made of. Mm. And so you know, very much it's about how, how do we take in what the experience of it is right now and come forward, you know, step forward even stronger than we were mm. before. And that's what it really is, mm. right? It's like having the experience and then coming back stronger, being mm. so brilliant that no matter what it is that we're experiencing right now, we know, without a doubt, that we can move through this together. Mm. Could you give some specific, uh, I know you're having, you know, your coaching institute, uh, but you're involved in so many uh, different things. So uh, how do you, how do you express, you know, you, this, this call in, in practical activities? Yeah. So, I mean, as far as like working with people, you know, I, I do run, I have a nine month, uh, it's a coach training and leadership course. And in that course, you know, not only are we diving into psychosynthesis, but we also look at, um, you know, I, I'm kind of an armchair cosmologist, if you will, yeah. you know, like cosmology, the story of our time, and especially the universe story, the scientific story of our time right now is very, I'm very passionate about that. And so I, I bring those teachings into the work that we do in a very experiential way. So I was speaking of Joanna Macy earlier, one of my mentors, she created a body of work called the work that reconnects mm. and so much about like despair and empowerment. Like how do we hold the pain of our world and transmute that into active hope, mm. right? Hope mm. is a verb. Like how do we take action on what it is that we're learning about ourselves? And so I work with, in, I work with people. I work mostly, I do a lot of group work. Mm which of course is being affected right now as far as like being in person, but I do also do a lot of work online. And yeah. so I do I do group work where I invite us to, there's so many beautiful exercises that invite us to feel into ourselves as, you know, as earth or to be with through different rituals and experience. Mm, mm. You know, one, one of them that comes from this body of work is called the truth mandala. And it's this beautiful ritual uh, where we, we create a circle and we put the four sacred items in the circle and each it's, it's a quadrant. And so each quadrant has an item. And so one of the quadrants represents fear, for instance, mm. and um, there's a stone and that stone represents how our hearts become contracted when we're in fear and we, 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 we aren't able to really move. Right. And what we do is we allow ourselves to be with the experience of fear at the same time, hold the flip side of that, which is our courage mm. with that. Right. Mm. And the other quadrant would hold our grief. Mm. And we go in there and we have dry leaves and we can be with those, those leaves as a symbol for our grief and know that we only grieve for what we love. And mm. so by 
in our grief, we ultimately tune into a deeper experience of love for our world, mm. right? And then we may tune into our anger, which would be a, the stick. And then that, that we hold, hold, you know, our righteous anger. This, that's a rising right now for what's happening in our world. And it's really our passion for justice. Mm. You know, knowing that something new needs to arise and what's going on is not okay. And it's okay to feel angry about that and like allow that righteous anger to be a tool that moves us into our love and our action from our love mm. for what's righteous. Mm feels like truth and then the fourth quadrant is this empty bowl that represents a sense of hopelessness mm. which I think a lot of us are sitting with too right now mm. so this is relevant and then in that space we also allow ourselves to become a vessel mm. to be filled with, with what wants to emerge the, the transpersonal qualities that want to be infused into our personal self and be lived into the world mm. right so it's this beautiful ritual and one at a time people come in and they sit with what's there and and express it and feel it in whatever way feels honest or it could even be in silence or it could mm. be through tears or it could be through a song or and then we hold each other collectively mm. in that experience of expressing what's here and coming through to the other side and coming back together in our love for life for ourselves for our world for what's possible mm. right so there's an expression of one beautiful exercise that i, mm. I Love to hold people through it's very powerful mm. um, so I so that those are some of the ways that I work with people um, you know in 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 this and through this mm. exactly and in, in this way you will also give them the tools to come through times like this you know uh, because I think this is actually what the time is uh, calling us to do it's wake up wake up to the essence of who we are and um, it's very, it's very. Your work is very related to what I'm doing too. You know, I have a big, uh, I have a big love for meditation and everything that is related to, to how to, uh, how to recognize ourselves, how to transform ourselves, and how to be powerful and influential in our life because we are here to to manifest uh, the deeper being of our soul. So. So I think, and I think, um, I think perhaps also this is uh, some of the most um, important um, gift we can give right now is to help people realize that they are they are not the body, they are not their possessions, they are not uh, the emotional stage, they are not all the 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 thoughts in the the head. No, they are a loving observer, and from this point, from this point of pure awareness. Uh, if we really can practice this, we start to to be able to manage ourselves, manage all the conflicting inner voices, all the stress and all the influences. And I think uh, we have we have put so much emphasis about controlling the outer environment and forgetting that we really need to control or man master, I would rather say, the inner environment of all the influences that we that we perceive in a yeah in on a daily basis. Because this is the only way that each and every of us, of us can really find that inner voice who is the it's actually funny because we call it the call of self, but we are the one who calls. You know, the, the, the deeper self, which is us, is calling us to show up, to uh, express our deeper identity. And of course, this is a, a lifelong journey, but it's so important right now because this, this awakening now is a group awakening. So it's so important that people are coming together and we share our skills and our understanding of what is going on on a global scale, but also how can I facilitate that growth and that change and that uh, in some way revolution that we are about to go through uh, and come out on the other side more resilient, as you said, and more powerful, more loving, uh, than before that's the challenge so we need you know guides who can who in some way can can walk 
walk the walk and go through this with an open eye and and uh, a big heart and skills to manage all this conflict that we experience uh, in the world because there's so much conflict, uh, so much opposing forces within the, the politics and yeah, many, many places. So, and psychosensis is, is all about resolving those um, uh, conflicts, harmonizing them, blending them. And the big, um, I, I would like to say, awareness, love and will is the triangle that managed to, to bring all this together in a beautiful synthesis. So, yeah, this is what we are here to, to offer in, in some way. And of course, many other people are doing great stuff, doctors, uh, politicians, uh, journalists. There are so many ways of uh, participating in this, uh, in this uh, yeah, now I use the word revolution because perhaps in some way it is a, a revolution that we are that we are in right now. Yeah, an evolution revolution. Yes, exactly. Is, yeah. there, is there any concluding things you would like to offer to our, our viewers uh, before we we close this uh, conversation? Yeah, you know, as you were just speaking right now, and first, I, I really want to honor you, Ken, and your incredible work, you know, all, all the, your beautiful books, and you're such a, I think, in a, so many ways, a pioneer, you know, in the work of psychosynthesis. So I really want to honor you and appreciate you for your, your voice and leadership in our world. Mm -hmm. And I feel very much that, you know, this is about how are we leading ourselves? How are we leading our lives? And when we as you were saying, like, you know, it's mastering this inner world or really getting, becoming more aware, you know, shining a light on, on the unconscious parts of us and making them more conscious mm. so we can make decisions that really align with who we are. Mm. And by doing that, we show up as leaders in our world, both in small and large ways. And that feels really important. And what else was coming through as you were speaking was, um, you know, we, we say, you know, in coach, coaching is 80% listening. Right? Mm. I, I want to actually like bring that into our lives and say like our lives could be 80% listening. Mm. What would that look like mm. to spend more time listening to what's happening inside of us, to what's happening around us? Mm. So really, it's like we don't always know what we think and feel until we articulate it or write mm. it. Or, you know, share it with somebody like having a, having a guide, a coach, someone like that with you, you know, or a good friend, like mm. in some listening to what wants to come through, what wants to emerge in, in you right now, you know, because something, there's a reason why this is happening for us right now in the way that it's happening globally, mm. right? In the beginning, you know, this is no mistake. There are no accidents, right? Mm. Nature is perfect. When you look into a forest, everything is perfect. So if we look at life like that and say, mm. what about this is here for us right now? Mm. You know, it, it will invite us to see this from a much more profound perspective that can completely transform the way we show up in our lives and the way we show up in our world. Mm. That's the great invitation of this moment. Mm. If you should uh, give the, our listeners um, three short advice of how to navigate this crisis, what would it be if you just spontaneously? Uh... So ad advice on how to move through the crisis? Yes. Advice on how to move through the crisis. I mean, goodness, I feel like we've, we've touched on a lot. Yes, it's, a, it's, a sense, it's a, the essential. So here it is. <laughs> First, presence. Yes. Allow yourself to become present with what is. Right? This is this is the revolutionary act in of itself. Mm. Right? Presence brings us to gratitude for the moment. You know, and we live in a world of more, better, faster now. You know, we need to have things to feel good and feel whole. <laughs> presence. You have everything you need inside of you. Everything you need to navigate through this moment is here. Mm. Become present to that. Become present to what's happening in our world on a larger level. You know, hear and see and experiencing experience things right now both through the personal experience of what it is and simultaneously don't forget to hold it as a loving observer mm. Most importantly like so be with it and know that i'm experiencing this and 
who I am is so much more than this. How am I also holding the experience of this as the one who's noticing? Okay. Mm -hmm. Those are some really important things there. Um, and the, the third thing I would say is we are not alone in our isolation. Beautiful. We're all here together. Mm, beautiful. It has been such a pleasure to have this conversation uh, with you, uh, Val. Um, okay. Thank you for showing up and uh, I'm uh, looking forward for another episode uh, somewhere in the future. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Yeah, this feels so important right now. So I'm grateful mm. we can hold this space for, for us and for everyone listening. Yeah. And uh, we will also, to all the viewers out there, we will say um, thank you for, for being here with us. Uh, we appreciate it. And uh, light your light in the world. We need you. Uh, so thank you from... Us to you. Bye bye.